What's up, y'all? Today we're talking about how pride kills your relationship with God. That's right, man. We're talking about pride today. Pride. The number one spiritual killer. The number one spiritual killer. Now, sometimes I don't be bringing up scriptures in these videos, and I do that for a reason. So I know some of y'all might feel a way about that, but I do that because I want to paint the picture of the scripture, right? Like a canvas. I'm helping y'all see something. This is why I connect the stories. I connect what happened. I may bring up some scriptures sometimes, but I don't always write it down. But I do that for a reason because I want people to think. I also want people to go to the Bible for themselves. You understand what I'm saying? But today, I'm going to bring up some scriptures. We're going to talk about this pride, man, because pride is a killer. All right, hold up. All right, so I'm going to go over some scriptures about pride, y'all. Now, I might not write them down on the, on the screen, but I'm going to go over some scriptures for y'all, all right? Proverbs 11.2 says, When pride comes, then comes disgrace. But with the humble is wisdom. Proverbs 29.23 says, One's pride will bring him low, but he who is lowly in spirit will obtain honor. That means humble. Lowly in spirit means humble. Proverbs 8.13 says, The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. Woo! God hates pride. Let's keep going. Proverbs 16.18 Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. James 4, 6 says, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Proverbs 16, 5 says, everyone who is arrogant in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Be assured he will not go unpunished. 1 John 2, 16 says, for all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. I'm sure y'all get the point, right? God hates pride, y'all. And I don't know about y'all, but we live in this prideful world. A lot of us be like, oh my God, I can be prideful. I can be selfish. God is selfish. God is jealous towards you. But God is selfless. God is loving. God is caring. God puts himself to the side. God is nurturing. God is everything that gives to you. Everything that God is, is giving. Pride is not giving. Pride is taking. Pride is myself. Pride is me, 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 me. I, 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 I. Pride is my feelings. And never what about their feelings. Pride is selfish, y'all. And selfishness actually produces sin, y'all. How do I know this? Because God is selfless, y'all. God consistently in the Bible, when you read the Bible, don't you hear him saying consistently, give to others. Think of others. Die to yourselves. Deny yourself. Pride does not say love others. Be kind to others. Forgive your enemies. Forgive the people who hurt you. Pride doesn't say that, does it? Pride doesn't forgive an offense. Pride gets offended. Pride is not selfless. Pride, pride is selfish. Pride is not godly. Pride does not look like God. Pride looks like the world. So this is the issue. It kills our relationship with God because the more I am prideful, the more we are prideful, it actually keeps me from doing the very thing that God needs me to do. Pride keeps me from looking in the mirror at myself, does it not? Pride keeps me from apologizing when I'm wrong, does it not? Pride keeps me from giving someone when I have something that they need, right? That's what pride does because it's me, 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 me. Pride protects me from loving others. Pride wants more love than it wants to give love. Do you understand? Do, do, do y'all get what I'm trying to tell y'all? But the reason why this kills our relationship with God, because the more prideful I am, the more the enemy wins. It's kind of like, to be honest, being prideful is literally idolizing the devil, literally idolizing the enemy. 
Because the enemy tells you lies to get you to focus on yourself. Think about it. The devil, he want to kill you. He, he coming after you. He wants you to be selfish, right? He wants you to have sex before marriage. Why? Because he knows what it does to you. He also knows what it does in your relationship. He wants you to, 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 to put down your foot to everybody. He wants you to, to feel like you got to make a point. That's what pride does, y'all. God is not like that. You can't tell me you see God being prideful in the Bible when he consistently keeps forgiving you over and over and over and over. A prideful God would kill you, would he not? A prideful God would, would, would get rid of you in an instance and don't care. A prideful God would not look past what you did. And consistently keep looking past. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't go through consequences and that God does not allow you to go through something or, or, or God does not correct you. That does not mean that. That also means that God loves you because he knows his love is to bless you and to help you. And his correction actually blesses you and loves you. The enemy wants to kill your spirit. The enemy wants to kill everything. If I am prideful, that cuts off relationships. God wants to bless relationships. He wants relationships to prosper. He wants love to be filled in relationships. This is why he wants to get rid of sin. But the devil wants you to sin because he knows once I sin, it kills everything. Sin is equated to death, right? But sin is also equated or sin is produced from selfishness. That's a fact. People might be like, oh, no, no. All right, be selfish then and see what happens. Be selfish and see if it's sinning. The Bible says if you know to do something and do not do it, you have now sinned. But if you don't do something, it's more than likely because you ain't want to. But if you could have did something for someone else, that would have been selfless. That can't be sinful when it's to help someone else. But if you don't do something that could help someone else, now you're being prideful, which is selfish which produces sinful nature. Also, it doesn't produce love and God is love. So how can someone else see God in you when you're consistently being prideful, right? You take that option away. People cannot see God inside of you when you're consistently thinking about yourself. The world is already like that. The world is already selfish. The world is already prideful. We need people who, who are out there and courageous enough to help others. But in order to help somebody, you got to put yourself to the side. You got to be selfless. You got to think of others. You got to put yourself, you got to put yourself second. God says to be first, you must be last. But someone who wants to be first, that means they'll be putting others last, right? Is that not prideful? Or is that loving? You tell me. Y'all can figure it out, right? Like, tell me. Is that loving? God is not prideful. God does not want us to be prideful. God knows that it kills our relationship with him. It keeps us from him. How do I know? It's in Adam and Eve. Was that not prideful? Was that not selfish? God told you what not to do, but you did what you wanted to do. Because what? It felt good. And you look past what God said. And I'm not saying that we don't sin. I'm not saying that we don't have prideful ways because we're in the world of sin. But the key is, is do I care about it or not? Do I care about being prideful or do I care about giving? Do I care about being selfless? Do I care about others more than I care about myself? Do I go around just blaming everybody for everything and never looking at myself? Can I apologize to others, right? Do I, did I, do I just always put myself first? It's just about me, 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 me. If you a person and you consistently blame everybody else, you don't take accountability and responsibility for your actions. That's pride. Here's another thing. Y'all about to get mad at me about this. You being so independent, prideful. Ooh, Rudy, don't say that. Oh my God, Rudy, you lying. No, it ain't, no, it ain't, no, it ain't. God told me to be independent. No, he did not. God did not tell you to be that. God told you to be interdependent. He did not tell you to live a life of independence because the more independent you are, the more you don't need nobody. So if you're so independent, you're not going to call on God. 
God help me. That's pride when you don't ask for help. Ooh, somebody hurting, right? I know, I know, but it's the truth. But this keeps you from God because the more prideful you are, you're not going to think about God. You're not going to think you need help. You're going to try to do everything yourself. You feel me? That keeps you from God because you're not going to him. When you're consistently over here being prideful to others because you're so independent and you don't need their help, guess what? They don't feel love from you. And you also can't go to God to help them. Cut you off, right? Your, your mind is never on God when you're so independent, super independent. When you're so prideful, your mind does not think of others. Your mind literally, unconsciously, subconsciously thinks about you. And then that goes into relationships and destroys relationships. And then that goes into parenting and destroys how you are as a parent. Why do you think we got parents that act the way and they don't care? Prideful. And obviously it's a deep, dark demon, but that's where it comes from. The devil lies to us. The devil says, no, you should be happy. You should know you deserve that. No, they treated you wrong. You should not help them. No, they hurt you. You should. Why would you forgive them? For what? And you believe it. You feel what I'm saying? And you believe it. So now you're prideful because you believe these lies, but you also got the world telling you the same thing. You also got society telling you the same thing. You also got social media and these stupid posts. That's not godly. That's not selfless. Telling you this stuff too. Actually feeding you more lies to become more prideful. But the closer you get to God, the less prideful you are. The closer you get to God, the more you want to give to others. The closer you get to God, the more you're willing to be more like Christ. But what does looking like Christ look like? It looks like being selfless. It looks like dying to myself, dying to how I feel. Why? Because now you're more willing to sacrifice and go through pain. Oh, not pain, Rudy. I shouldn't have to go to pain. I don't deserve this. No, nope, but Jesus did it. So now you're more willing to go through pain in order to help someone, in order to love someone. And if you read, if you read your Bible, y'all, y'all know I'm not lying. Y'all can't look at me and tell me Christ is not like that. When did Christ only think about himself? I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait. When did Jesus think about himself? Or did he always think about others? Did he? Didn't he? And then he told you to do the same. He did. God hates pride because pride does not produce love or God's fruit. Righteous, you cannot walk in righteousness when you are so prideful. Pride makes you focus on your flesh. What you want, what you want, what feels good, what I want, what I want. Oh my God, I want that. I want that. I want that. I want that. If you just think about everything that you want, then you can never see what God needs. Pride clouds your judgment. You can't see. You can't see what's happening. You can't hear nothing because of your pride. That's a heart issue. You understand? Look in the Bible. If you read the stories, King Saul, King Saul, King Saul got the anointing to be the first king of Israel, but God took it away. Why did he take it away? The Bible said it was his pride. Mm, it was his pride. That's why. Look at Judas. Judas chose the world, chose money, chose what he wanted, wealth over Christ. Pride. Samson chose to get a Philistine woman over what? What he wanted. Rather than over what his family told. His family told him to get a woman in their family. That's literally God telling you to stay within the confines of our family so that I can bless you. But he chose to go outside of those boundaries, outside of those limits, towards the world, towards someone who is not loving and caring and selfless, but towards the world. It was his pride that did that. Look what our pride does. You see what I'm saying? Look what our pride does. Judas killed himself because of pride. King Saul basically killed himself with his own, with his own sword. Why? Because of pride. 
But 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 those who lived, their pride was put to the side. Look at David. David, okay, he was prideful in a way because he killed his mans to get his wife, right? But when you look at how his lifestyle was, that was a, a instance and a couple times when he sinned. You can't say that he was a specifically sinful man or else when or else God wouldn't have called him. Or else you wouldn't get the Psalms, or else you wouldn't see him all over Samuel, the book of Samuel, crying to God, consistently running to God, consistently could have killed somebody and then chose not to kill him because he thought about God. Pride would have caused him to kill King Saul, but he didn't. Why would it would have caught? Because he would have remembered, oh, he out here trying to kill me. He not about to kill me today. His pride is going to cause him to kill that man. But instead, he put his pride to the side because of what God said. And he saved that man, right? He, he saved him from dying that day. He, he did what God said. Selflessness, humility is of God. All of these things show God's love. It produces God's love, God's righteousness. People see us through God because of our righteousness, because of our selflessness, not because of our pridefulness. They see evil. Pride produces evil, which is not of God. God hates pride. All right. So I want to make this video because I know a lot of people, they don't be thinking they prideful. Look, man, if you so selfish, if you read in this Bible and you so selfish, that's pride. That is pride. Go to God and let him change your heart. Ask him to help you forgive people. Ask him to help you love others, to love your enemies. The Bible says love your enemies. A prideful person can't love their enemies. How, sway? But a godly, loving, selfless, giving, serving, righteous follower of God can. Right? And then eventually they will see God in you and through you. And that can pull them to God. But pride can't do that. Pride will keep them away from you. Pride will keep them away from God. Pride will make them not want to go to church. Pride will have them feeling church hurt. You don't want to be a part of that. Let's make sure that we represent Christ and who he is. And stop thinking about ourselves all the time. It's not about us. To follow Christ is to deny yourself. It's to die to yourself. That means your wants. How you feel. For others. And that's how God actually blesses you with everything that you need after. When you do that for him, he gives you everything after. And then you're able to do it even more. Why? Because you're a spiritual leader. You're a soldier in Christ now. That's why. All right, y'all. Don't let pride kill your relationship with God. Don't let pride cause you to make the wrong decisions. Don't let pride have you running with the wrong people. Don't let pride have you not loving others. Don't let pride keep you away from God. Don't let the enemy lie to you. Understand what his truth is. And pride ain't a part of it. The truth is, pride will have you disconnected from God. The truth is, you won't be able to hear a thing from God if you keep being prideful. The truth is, God will let them consequences happen in your life. If you stop choosing him, but you keep choosing your pride and what you want and how you feel and your decisions and your responses to people and trying to get them back and all of these other things, man. God loves you. That's why he don't want you to be that way. He also don't want you to go through them consequences. But he also will let you go through them consequences if you choose to. All right. So let's put this pride to the side. Let's practice putting our pride to the side. Let's practice thinking of others, no matter how we feel, let's practice not responding and reacting emotionally in every situation. Let's practice having patience and thinking of others. Let's practice being more like Christ and calling on God and asking Jesus for his spirit and trust he will do it for us. All right, that's all I got for y'all. I hope this blessed y'all, I hope this helped y'all. If you like this video, please like it, please comment. Let me know how you feel and please subscribe, y'all. Continue to subscribe and share this video. Share all my videos, all right? I thank y'all. I love y'all. I'm going to get it, y'all, when I get it, y'all.